Welcome to the Parsha Perspective. Each week, we will delve deep in a weekly Torah portion to find a practical and insightful way to enhance your daily life. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Rabbi Shalom Yemini, and each week we will look into the weekly Torah portion to find practical and insightful ways to enhance your daily life. This week's Parsha Perspective is in honor of the Shleshim, the 30-day period that we just concluded from the horrific attacks on October 7th. May HaKadosh Baruch Hu, may God protect our brave soldiers as they go and eradicate our enemies. May they find and bring home all the hostages from Gaza. And may Hashem give comfort and nechama to all those who have lost family or friends in the horrific attacks. This week's Parsha Perspective is in honor of the Fu Shalema of all those injured in the attack as well as Harav Amita Ben Shoshana and may they all experience a complete and speedy recovery. This week's Parsha Perspective is in loving memory of my dear aunt, Leah Mencha Basak of Yosef, Ebra ben Ephraim, Shlomo ben Edward, and Yerachmina ben Neil ben Gedalia. May they and all their souls of those who were killed in the horrific attacks be uplifted, and may the memories continue to be a blessing. This week's Torah portion is Parsha's Chayi Sarah, Continuing Lasting Legacies. Our Parsha begins with the passing of Sarah Imenu at the age of 127 years old. Avram Avinu negotiated with Ephron Achiti to buy a plot of land in Hebron known as the Ma'ara Samachbela, the double cave for 400 shekels. And this cave would be used as a burial spot for the next generations for his son and grandchildren. When Avram finished mourning for his wife Sarah, he sent his most trusted servant Eliezer to find a wife for his son Yitzchak. And when Eliezer arrived in the city, he prayed to Hashem to have mercy on him and show him the future wife of his master's son, Yitzchak. The test he formulated was if the girl would offer him water, and specifically for his camels as well, to drink, he would know that she is the wife of Yitzchak Avinu. Eliezer went to the city well and encountered a young girl, Rivka Yiminu, carrying a water jug on her shoulders, and when he approached her and requested water, she gave him water to quench his thirst, but she also offered him and provided water to his many camels to drink. When Eliezer asked who she was, he discovered that her name was Rivka and she was a great niece of Avram and at that moment he knew that Hashem has answered his prayers and he has found the wife of Yitzchak Avinu. Rivka ran home to tell her family about Eliezer and his mission to find Yitzchak a wife and her brother Lavan quickly went outside to greet Eliezer and invited him to stay the night. The following day, Eliezer and Rivka traveled back to Canaan to meet her potential and future husband. When Yitzchak Avinu met Rivka, he brought her into his mother's tent to see if the miracles of her tent would return. While Sari Imenu was alive, her candles remained illuminated from Friday afternoon to Friday afternoon. Her dough stayed fresh and miraculously increased as needed. And most importantly, a cloud of God, the Shekhinah, the cloud of glory, hovered over her tent. But all these incredible miracles vanished when Sari Imenu passed away, and yet... When Rivka Imenu entered Sarah's tent, all these miracles returned. Once again, the cloud of glory hovered over the tent. Her candles burned for an entire week and her dough never finished. And when Yitzchak saw these miracles returned, he knew that she was the one to become his wife. She was the one to continue his amazing mother's legacy. However, a question comes to mind. The second Pusik of our Torah portion relates how Avram Avinu mourned for his wife, for the mother of the Jewish nation, Sarah Imenu. And Sarah passed away in Kiris Abba, which is Hebron in the land of Canaan. And Avram came to eulogize Sarah and to cry for her. Interestingly, the Torah uses just five words to describe and relate how Avram Avinu mourned for his wife Sarah Imenu. Shouldn't the Torah have elaborated just a bit more? and detailed how Avram Avinu actually mourned for his wife and his partner in their holy mission. Why does the Pasuk only use five words to recount how Avram Avinu grieved the loss of Sarah Yimenu? Unfortunately, the answer to this question is relevant in ways we could have never imagined. We haven't even begun to truly mourn the loss of the 1,400 holy souls that were slaughtered as we are heavily focused on eradicating our enemies and bringing the hostages home safely. 
We just concluded the Shlesha, the 30-day mourning period of intense mourning, actually, for those killed in the horrific attacks. And sadly, this is not the first time in history nor in recent memory that we have experienced such pain and sorrow. From the slaughter of 69 Jews in Hebron in 1929 before the modern state of Israel, to the incomprehensible wickedness of the Nazi regime, our knowledge of pain and sorrow is substantial. But what also is substantial is our knowledge of creating living memorials to honor those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. We have and will continue to build massive living testimonials to keep their memories alive and ensure the continuity of the Jewish nation. We will follow the footsteps of our forefather Avram Avinu, who immediately set out to continue Sarah Imenu's legacy. He sent out his most trusted servant Eliezer to find the wife of their only son, the next forefather of the Jewish people, Yitzchak Avinu. The living testimony to Sarah Imenu's life was enshrined in history as Rivka entered Sarah's tent, becoming the night's matriarch of the Jewish nation. The miracles that define Sarah's tent and holiness returned to her rightful place, the carrier of her legacy. The Jewish reaction to pain, sorrow, and tragedy is purposeful grief and heartbreak that seeds a lasting future for our nation. In the face of such wickedness, cruelty, and outright evil abroad and at home, we cannot let them prevail. We cannot let them win or succeed for the sake of the millions who were murdered in cold blood for the simple fact that they were Jewish. We must overcome. We must defeat and succeed far beyond our quantitative numbers to protect the legacies formed in suffering and set by the ultimate sacrifice. And I know that this perspective is a challenge set before every Jew from our inception till this very day. How do we mourn the past in a manner that ensures our future? How do we honor those who have given everything of themselves to our Creator, to our Father in Heaven? How do we live our lives today with the legacies of giants on our shoulders? And while this awareness may seem daunting, the Lubavitcher Rebbe of Menachem Menlu Schneerson outlines the steps we must take. No matter who we are, what profession we are in, or how much we have studied, we must share God's love with all. We can help those less fortunate, share God's wisdom, and give strength as we cross the finish line into the Geula Amitis Vahashlema, the ultimate redemption. I will end off with a quote written by Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs of Blessed Memory in his book Crisis and Covenant. The attempt to eliminate the people of God was an attempt to eradicate the presence of God from the human situation. The fact that after Auschwitz, the Jewish people still lives affirms its faith of the most powerful testimony that God still lives. Am Yisrael Chai, the Jewish people will remain alive. Have a great weekend and a good Shabbos. Thank you for tuning in to the Parsha Perspective. Check out our website, theparshaperspective.com. Send thoughts and comments to theparshaperspective at gmail.com. Till next time, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.